Ozark Highlands Radio is brought to you by the Ozark Folk Center State Park in Mountain View, Arkansas, a wonderful way to enjoy yesterday. On the web at (laughs) OzarkFolkCenter.com. Greetings, folks. This is Dave Smith, host of Ozark Highlands Radio. Welcome to our show. This week we'll be featuring the music of and interviews with Toronto singer-songwriter, multi-instrumentalist, and CFMA Traditional Singer of the Year, Hannah Shira Naiman. Down in the vault, Mark Jones has found a recording of his mom and sister, Ramona and Elisa Jones, performing the Buck White tune, Down Home Waltz. And folklorist and guest host Charlie Sandage continues his quest to find out what's worth keeping from our past in the rapidly evolving culture of our present. All that this week on Ozark Highlands Radio. Named Traditional Singer of the Year in 2017 by the Canadian Folk Music Association, Hannah Shira Naiman's banjo-grounded songs take the listener to the Appalachian Mountains and eras back in time, drawing on her roots in Toronto's old-time music community to share powerful tales of hope and loss. Hannah has visited us several times in the past few years. Here she is on our stage last summer. Reach the 
the snow comes down covering up the sound I miss you most I miss you Hannah's been doing music ever since she was a little kid. Not this kind of music, but, I mean, she, she was always a good singer, and she did her own music, and, and there was a time where she didn't want to have anything to do with the music I was interested in. It's true. <laughs> what were you, I mean, was it dolls and things? Or? Uh, no, I mean, I was actually studying classical music. Oh, okay. And so I remember thinking that the stuff my dad was listening to, like, oh, those horrible singers. Why do people listen to Carter family? Oh, my gosh, those people with their nasally voices. How do you even? <laughs> so I didn't like that at all. But I came around, obviously. I yes. came around. That was just me well, being you know, a teenager. Kids in high school, and, <laughs> you know, they go with the music of their peers, and she went that way for quite a while. I don't know. One day, she, you know, we're playing the music in her house all the time, and she says, show me something on the banjo. She never played it before. And I just plopped it in her lap and says, this is what you do. And I showed her the basic claw hammer stroke. And she just took it away. Next thing I know, she's playing. Fox in the grass, oh, red little fox in the grass, oh, red little fox 
started to play the banjo and she started to play the fiddle and she ends up she has my fiddle <laughs> and i my have banjo. all of his instruments actually <laughs> and my guitar but anyway uh she started to play this music and, and wanted to at that point she she really got interested in it and wanted to play music with my peers on an equal basis and some friends of mine who are very very good musicians she wanted to learn from them and play with them and show she actually um, was seeking out one of my friends from Virginia, Jim Childress, who's a really good fiddle player, and spent a little time with him learning his fiddle tunes. And she became pretty good on the fiddle and excited about this kind of music. So it all, all the stuff she's learning has been going right into the stuff that she's been creating. <laughs> playing a couple of shows in Toronto at a sort of local dive bar and uh, I wanted to have a big band with me so I got a quartet uh, to play along with me Rosalind Dennett on the fiddle and Rachel Malas on the bass and my dad on guitar and um, those were the the best musicians I thought of for my sound and I just thought these are the people that I want and one of them happens to be my dad that's okay you know as far as why we're tra working in a duo it's hard to travel in a big group. Um, if if I had my way, I would love to be able to do that. 
But uh, especially this year, you know, I've been really picking and choosing the gigs that I'm playing because I'm toting around this one-year-old, and so we're just simplifying in every direction, and so it's fun to play in a duo. We, we, we're able to bounce things back and forth, and especially with instrument swapping, you know, just toss my dad over the guitar, and I'll play the banjo, and then we switch and play some fiddle tunes wherever, and yeah, it works out. But she's the boss in this case. I get to boss him around, (laughs) so that's good, too. (laughs) I like cherries, I like pie, I like birdies when they fly. banjoist and songwriter Hannah Sheeran Naiman playing some of her original songs. In that set we heard Know the Mountain, Little Fox, Ant and Bee, and Rubiki. We'll be featuring more songs and interviews with this talented young lady on this week's show, but after a short break, let's head down to the vault for a visit with my buddy Mark Jones. This is Ozark Highlands Radio. Welcome back to Ozark Highlands Radio. Come take a trip with me down to the vault with a visit with Mark Jones, the guy that keeps track of all of our music here at the Ozark Folk Center. 
Well, how you doing this week, Mark? Oh, Dave, I'm doing pretty good. Well, you've been sweeping up down here. It looks I pretty have. nice. I've been sweeping and cleaning, and I've got to move a shelf over here that's got a bunch of material on it, and we just may need to listen through that stuff on the shelf. I love hearing what you got down here. You know, you come from a very musical family. A lot of people may not know this. You're your dad is Lewis, Grandpa Jones. Your mom's Ramona Jones, and all your family plays music. You got anything down here by your family? Well, Dave, I do. Come to think of it, one of the things that's on that shelf that I was talking about, and well, no, I think it's right under it, on the shelf under it. Let me go get it, and I'll come back and play it for okay. you. Okay. Oh! Dang that shelf. Here it is, Dave. It is a song called Down Home Waltz. It was uh, written by Buck White a long time ago. And this is my mom playing mandolin and my sister, Elisa, playing hammer dulcimer. Well, I'd like to hear it. Okay. The endings don't always work out, do they? <laughs> Not always. <laughs> that's happened to all of us, that's for sure. That's for sure. That was mighty fine. Who played guitar on there? You know, I, I'm i trying to think who that... It, it sounds awful good. I don't... I don't know if it was me or not. I, well, now, was it awful or good? Well, uh, <laughs> he played, whoever it was, played better than I can uh, remember myself playing. Well, I'll bet that was you on there. All right. Well, you enjoyed it. I did that. enjoy it. That's, and Buck White, he was a friend of your family's, wasn't he? He sure was. Yeah. Well, thanks a lot, Mark. Good to hear your sister and your mom playing again, for sure. How about me playing guitar? Well, that was okay, too. Uh, okay. Like you said, that was awful. Good. <laughs> Awful good. All right. See you next week, Mark. All right.
Hannah Shira Naiman grew up around folk music as her celebrated banjo-playing father, Arnie Naiman, and award-winning children's musician mother, Kathy Reed Naiman, brought her to numerous folk camps and festivals every year. But it wasn't until she left home that Hannah began to explore her father's instrument in a new way. Collaborating with vocalist Emily Adam as part of folk duo The Blackest Crow sparked a more serious interest in making music. Here are some more songs from Hannah. Her singer, her, her songs, I don't, she just kind of surprised us on that. Just like, I don't know. That, this That's not true. Can I interject? Yeah. <laughs> refresh I, my memory. I will refresh Please. your memory. I have been writing songs since I was a teenager, but I remember distinctly that I continued to present you with songs that I thought were really great. And you didn't like them at I all. I dissed them, right? <laughs> <laughs> you didn't give them the time of day, actually, which was fine. Because then when I finally did come to you with a song that was worth noticing, you actually did. I was dabbling in a lot of singer-songwriter stuff. I was listening to more, you know, like Alanis Morissette and then Ani DeFranco and going in, into angrier and angrier female rock. And um, and then I, uh, I dis distinctly and deliberately decided to uh, delve into old time music. And um, once I did, those influences started to come into my songwriting too. Uh, it was a very natural thing. Uh, and so I think, you Plus. know, I think my dad just doesn't like that other music. <laughs> Kayla McDonald. Kayla McDay. Rode across. 
across the countryside and rode, rode away. When the moon was full and bright, once we rode into the night. Oh, the fire we had then still burns, still burns. Come, my love, into the night. On the winds, come take your flight. My arms are wide, my heart is light. Come, Callum. Was on one August Eve upon the green grass where we stood, our eyes did catch and linger long, a gaze well understood. Callum MacDonald, Callum McDay, rode across the country side and rode, rode away. When the moon was full and bright, once we rode into the night, oh, the fire we had then still burns, still burns. With passion there we laid our bed, as the sky faded from But oh, tis fate, tis fate, the stars are fools, and so are we, to think our love could last like theirs through all eternity. Callum MacDonald, Callum McDay, rode across the countryside and full and bright once we rode into the night oh the fire we had then still burns still burns blindly still we made our plan to meet again in foreign land and kindle our beloved flame in vain, alas, in vain. For oh, tis fate we see, a love like ours can never be. Away then, Callum, take your flight, away, away from me. Callum, Side and road, road away. Thank you. The nature of folk music, of old time music anyway, is it's quite structured. So there are formats that just work. They're tried and tested and true, and you know, sort of the A A B B format of fiddle tunes, you can apply that. In writing new material, you know, you find a format of a song that works and you put on your own take of the lyrics. And that's that's part of what makes it sound, I think, authentic is that I'm not I'm not necessarily breaking convention when I when I work out the structure of my songs. And then as far as words go, um, I really do try and keep the stories that I'm telling pretty general so that I'm not speaking about my own specific, very unique tale, um, although I, I am, but I'm, I'm speaking about it in, in a much more general sense in language that draws from, from this folk music repertoire. So, you know, I'm talking about a willow tree and I'm obviously telling my own story, but I'm, I'm using the lingo and the, and the formats uh, of this music that's already been established. <laughs> Wandered far from her home 
on her own. She got lost in the rambling wood, fell asleep by a babbling brook. When she woke, then she spoke, then she spoke. When she woke, then she spoke, and she said, She said, Take me down to the blue. That was three more songs from Canadian musician Hannah Sheeran Naiman. Hannah played three more original songs, starting with The Way to Go Home, followed by Callum and The Blue House. After this break, Charlie Sandage interviews Tom Dillard about the importance of remembering the past. You're listening to Ozark Highlands Radio. Welcome back to Ozark Highlands Radio. The facility from which this show originates, the Ozark Folk Center State Park in Mountain View, Arkansas, is dedicated to preserving the folklore and culture of the old-time Ozarks. The question here has always been, what parts of that culture do we want to preserve, and which do we let go? Charlie Sandage has been exploring that question in depth. Here's Charlie. <laughs>
Tom Dillard is a longtime advocate for effective teaching of state and local history in Arkansas's public schools, and he has a Sunday column in its most widely circulated newspaper. He was an obvious choice for an interview in a series about what's worth keeping from the earlier days of a regional collective culture. I talked with Tom, appropriately enough, among the stacks in a corner of the public library in Malvern, Arkansas. His answer to my opening question, what's important about studying state and local history, was a surprise. It's entertainment value. Um, I know that I am not alone in saying that there are many, many Americans who uh, find some pleasure in knowing about their past, in knowing about their own family histories, in knowing about how their community and their state figures into the larger scheme of American history and world history, just the, the history of humankind. And there's something, I think, innate within people. Uh, somehow or other, we do find uh, looking at the past to, be, to have a certain entertainment value. Tom noted the hundreds of thousands who visit historical sites around the country and around the world and how TV programs, films, and novels that tell historical stories find eager audiences. Then he recounted a conversation with his wife about the book and TV series Lonesome Dove. Lonesome Dove helped her put the whole Western story into a context which she could understand on a human level. It wasn't just a, a big time history, it was history that was played out on the local level. You know, there was a great political leader who once said that all politics are local. Well, all history is local, too, when you really get down to it. The human story is played out on the local level, and it does not matter where that, whether that local level is in Tulsa, Oklahoma, or in Tulare, California, or in Arkansas. It always plays out at the local level. Now, that doesn't mean, of course, that everybody has the same experience that every uh, town or community is going to uh, have some manifestation of the American experience played out in every aspect of life. But still, our story as a people uh, is played out on the local level. And to me, history means a lot more when I can get it down to the size that I can kind of wrap my mind around. Reading about World War II as a worldwide saga is useful, Tom explained, but hearing a personal story told by one veteran will connect you to that time as no book can. His reasons for advocating quality public school instruction in Arkansas history apply to any state or any community in the world. For a long, long time, Arkansas allowed other people to define us uh, through uh, comedians, uh, through cultural critics like H.L. Mencken. Uh, people defined Arkansas as backward, hopelessly uneducated. Uh, <laughs> our, our railroads never ran on time, so that resulted in a book called A Slow Train Through Arkansas, which was read by millions of people. Uh, we have been defined for so long by other people uh, that it is difficult for us to now take the reins and define ourselves. But understanding our own state and local history is a crucial aspect of us defining ourselves, taking that definition uh, away from uh, people who really don't have experience with the state and really don't necessarily understand it, and bringing it home. Arkansas historians, like those elsewhere, have been busy over the last few decades with focus on important, previously neglected areas of study. African Americans in Arkansas have a long, long history, and they have played such important roles in our state's development. And yet, for generations, that story was never told literally was left out in most instances. As curiosity grows about local communities and individuals, quirky and unexpected stories come to light, some with important things to teach us. 
Here's one of Tom Dillard's favorite examples. Dr. John R. Brinkley was a medical quack uh, from the 1920s and 30s, all the way up until the 1940s, actually, uh, in Arkansas. But he didn't start here in Arkansas. Brinkley, with sparse and spurious medical training, established a clinic in Kansas promoting implantation of goat glands and men wanting a boost to their manhood. He founded one of those super wattage radio stations along the Mexican border, blasting a gospel of pseudo-medicine, religion, and politics across the nation. Then he started another clinic in Little Rock, only to be shut down by lawsuits and IRS investigations. But along the way, Brinkley developed an enormous devoted following. In studying Dr. Brinkley, it is really interesting how I came to realize that people have the ability to believe what they want to believe, to believe what reinforces their perceptions. But anyhow, Dr. Brinkley is one of those touchstones in my life because it points out to me that things are not always what they seem to be, that just because someone sounds great on the radio and is telling you what you want to hear doesn't mean there's a bit of truth to it. More and more teachers in Arkansas and elsewhere are realizing that simple storytelling is essential to teaching history, and that involving students in finding and retelling local stories is among the most important things they can do. Learning, keeping, and telling stories from close to home, a component of Ozark or any other cultural tradition that's worth keeping. And as Tom Dillard observed as he ended this account of one heroic African-American attorney in Arkansas, the supply is endless working hard for several years, they were able to save the lives of those 12 innocent men. That's just one small story. There are hundreds more like it. And many of those stories have not been discovered yet. They're still out there to be discovered. So it's really important for people to understand that uh, there's still whole new discoveries to be made in state and local history, not just in Arkansas, but all across the country. Thanks, Charlie. The banjo, which was originally brought to America from Africa, was wildly popular in the second half of the 19th century, but fell into obscurity. Brought back by the likes of Uncle Dave Macon and Earl Scruggs, this once maligned instrument is experiencing a resurgence in popularity. Our featured artist, Hannah Sheeran Naiman, sure can make the banjo ring. Let's close out today's show with three more of her songs. Before I was born, I would say my dad was the black sheep in the area in Toronto in in his heyday of this music. It was just him. <laughs> and he traveled down to Virginia and, and played this music with his friends down here. But over over the years, the community of old time players in Toronto has exploded. There so, are tons. So let me just say, I, I live near Toronto. And when she was young, we lived in Toronto. And that's where I started living and playing this music. There was maybe less than a handful of people that even knew about this music and, and started to play it. But definitely since then, with the festivals in the United States especially, there's been a revival since the 1970s in this music. And now in Toronto, there's quite a community of especially young players that play this music really well. 
You can hardly go a night of the week without there being an old time or a bluegrass show now in Toronto. love Canada and um, right now I'm living in a rural area in Ontario and um, you know there's there's beauty different kinds of beauty across this great North American land and you just got to pick and choose where you are for for your lifetime and it seems it feels right to be where I am that's home yeah Fine. 
behind her had all the wind and rain and the elder she thought hard of that and they cried the dreadful wind and rain sister oh sister come and walk by the shore all the wind and rain and watch the ships as they sail o'er and they cried the dreadful wind and rain Good stuff from Canadian Hannah Shira Naiman. We faded into that set with Old Bob, then heard I Will Walk With You, and finished up with the haunting folk classic Oh, the Wind and Rain. Thanks for listening to our show this week. We'll be back next week with more good music on Ozark Highlands Radio. This is Dave Smith. Bye, everybody. Ozark Highlands Radio is produced by Jeff Glover. Executive producer is Darren Dorton. Additional support for this program comes from the Committee of 100, proudly supporting the Ozark Folk Center State Park since 1974. Arkansas State Parks, with 52 unique reasons to visit the natural state. On the web at arkansasstateparks.com. And by Stone Bank, with deep roots in Mountain View and a deep respect for those who preserve our heritage. More information about what it means to bank Boulder is at stonebank.com. For information on upcoming shows and events, We are on the web at OzarkHighlandsRadio.com. Until next time, I'm Donna Farrar.